Energy is needed for all work, from moving objects to thinking. Modern humans have high energy demands for fueling our bodies, heating or cooling our homes, refrigerating food, lighting, charging devices, and powering vehicles. Energy from fuels is thus an important topic. One type of reaction which generates and releases a lot of energy in the form of thermal energy and sometimes light energy is a combustion reaction. This highly exothermic reaction is between a fuel substance and oxygen gas. During combustion reactions, electrons are transferred from the fuel to oxygen. So oxygen is called the oxidizing agent and the fuel is called the reducing agent. Substances which tend to undergo combustion reactions include reactive metals such as the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. For example, magnesium burns in oxygen with an intense white light, producing magnesium oxide. Also reactive nonmetals such as sulfur, which when heated burns in pure oxygen, producing the corresponding oxide. And organic compounds such as hydrocarbons, which are compounds composed only of carbon and hydrogen. These compounds make good fuels as they release large amounts of energy when they burn. The hydrocarbons called the alkanes, whose reactions we will investigate in a moment, make especially good fuels. Here are some small alkane molecules. Alkanes are fully saturated hydrocarbon compounds. Fully saturated means all of their carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. This alkane, propane, is used as the fuel in Bunsen burners. Organic compounds such as propane have high activation energy, meaning they require an initial energy input, called the activation energy, to get the reaction going, so these fuels can be safely stored until needed. We can use a match or flint to supply this activation energy to ignite the propane fuel. If there is sufficient or excess oxygen gas present, for example by fully opening the air hole, then this reaction occurs. The combustion is said to be complete. The only products of complete combustion are carbon dioxide and water. The flame will burn blue and cleanly, giving off no smoke or soot. It will generate intense heat. Other organic compounds called alcohols also produce carbon dioxide and water upon complete combustion. Alcohols contain oxygen bonded to a hydrogen in a hydroxyl group. For example, the alcohol ethanol can also be used as a fuel to release energy during this reaction. Again, complete combustion produces carbon dioxide and water with intense heat and a clean blue flame. When there is insufficient oxygen supplied to a fuel, however, for example, when the air hole on a Bunsen burner is partially or fully closed, the fuel burns incompletely. Incomplete combustion of propane produces an orange smoky flame with less thermal energy. The incomplete combustion of propane is described by this equation, where one of the products is toxic carbon monoxide. Or this equation with particulate carbon or soot, which is a lung irritant, as a product. The incomplete combustion of ethanol would also produce either carbon monoxide or carbon and water. Alkanes and alcohols are two types of the many organic compounds which come from fossil fuels. Fossil fuels include natural gas, crude oil and coal, formed deep underground over long periods from the slow anaerobic decomposition of plants and animals. Intense heat and pressure provide the perfect conditions for this process. The energy that these compounds supply is originally obtained from the sun through photosynthesis in plants, algae and phytoplankton. The glucose produced is converted to many other compounds in plants and it is the anaerobic decomposition of these compounds which produce fossil fuel compounds, which are primarily composed 
of carbon and hydrogen. Coal is the most abundant of the fossil fuels. It is a black sedimentary rock composed mostly of carbon. Crude oil, also known as petroleum, is drilled and extracted from between layers of sedimentary rock deep under the ground. It is perhaps the most important fossil fuel since the raw materials derived from it are used as chemical feedstocks for the production of polymers, dyes, solvents, pharmaceuticals and fertilizers. This thick, oily, dark yellow-brown liquid is a complex mixture of many different organic compounds, mostly hydrocarbons. Natural gas is primarily composed of methane gas, the smallest hydrocarbon molecule. Besides the harmful products formed from burning fossil fuels incompletely, complete combustion is also considered to have an impact on the environment. Carbon dioxide produced during complete combustion of fossil fuels adds to the carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere. Although some sunlight reaching Earth is reflected back into space, carbon dioxide absorbs some sunlight and radiates it back to Earth as heat through infrared radiation. And so carbon dioxide is referred to as a greenhouse gas. Although this gas comprises only 0.04% of the atmosphere, some scientists believe that increasing levels from fossil fuel combustion could be a reason for the data suggesting global warming by the greenhouse effect. The increase in carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere over time is correlated with increase in average global temperatures, as we can see from the same general shapes of these two curves. However, recently, some scientists debate whether this correlation is causative or not. In other words, not all scientists agree that there is a link between increasing carbon dioxide levels and global temperatures. Some other disadvantages of using fossil fuels for our energy needs is that they are non-renewable, meaning at some point in the future they will run out, as they take longer to form than the rate at which we are using them. Fossil fuels are present in the Earth's crust in finite quantities. Other energy sources, such as wood from trees, however, are renewable and are considered a sustainable energy resource. This means that as long as we plant and grow new trees at the same rate as we are cutting trees down to use for fuel, then we won't run out of this energy source. Now that we know some of the disadvantages of using fossil fuels, let's investigate some advantages. Fossil fuels are abundant in the Earth's crust. They are relatively affordable and provide energy as they burn at a reasonable rate, meaning they don't burn too quickly or too slowly, and they supply energy in large quantities. Comparing the three fossil fuels, we can see that coal is abundant and cheap, but mining and transporting it is hazardous and energy intensive, and burning coal releases carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, which contribute to acid rain. Natural gas produces the fewest pollutants, although it does produce carbon dioxide, and transporting it is relatively easy. However, this more limited resource has an explosion hazard when handling pressurized gas canisters. Abundant crude oil can be easily piped and separated into a variety of useful components, like gasoline, which has a high energy output. But burning these compounds releases carbon dioxide, acid rain causing pollutants, and smog forming nitrogen oxides. Of the three, natural gas produces the most energy per unit mass. The amount of energy stored in and thus supplied by a fuel per unit volume of the fuel is called its energy density. The more energy supplied by a certain volume of a fuel the higher is its energy density. The specific energy of a fuel is the energy supplied per unit mass. The more energy supplied by a given mass, the higher is
is its specific energy. The graph shows the specific energies of some common fuels in megajoules per kilogram. Uranium-238 provides vastly more energy per kilogram than other fuels. Let's zoom in on the other fuels. We can see hydrogen has high specific energy and hydrogen doesn't produce carbon dioxide when it is combusted due to its lack of carbon. Wood has the lowest specific energy, releasing the least energy per unit mass. A similar graph comparing different alkanes specifically shows that smaller molecules with fewer carbon atoms have higher specific energy, meaning smaller alkanes provide more energy per unit mass. And this graph showing the mass of carbon dioxide produced per gram of fuel shows that smaller alkane molecules release less carbon dioxide. Larger alkanes tend to release more carbon dioxide and also tend to combust incompletely. We can make the conclusion that smaller alkanes are better, cleaner fuels. Now let's turn our attention to another type of fuel called a biofuel. We said earlier that photosynthesis uses energy from sunlight to fix carbon from carbon dioxide in the air into glucose in plants. The glucose produced can be converted to other compounds to produce biomass, useful as fuel, for example, wood. We can harness the energy in plant matter by converting the sugars in biomass to a fuel called a biofuel. Biofuels include ethanol, methanol, biodiesel, and methane. Ethanol, made from plant material, has been used as a biofuel additive to regular vehicle fuel such as gasoline, and some vehicles run on ethanol alone. One common way in which ethanol biofuel is made is by fermenting solutions of sugars from plants using yeast. The process occurs at about 25 to 35 degrees Celsius and is anaerobic, meaning it does not need oxygen to occur. The products of fermentation are ethanol and carbon dioxide gas. The main advantage of biofuels is their renewable and sustainable nature. Ethanol is produced quickly with crops replanted to replace those used. Some experts believe that ethanol biofuel production results in overall lowered carbon dioxide emissions compared to fossil fuels. However, growing biomass for biofuels requires agricultural land, leading to deforestation, habitat destruction, soil erosion, and reduced land available for food production. Building biomass processing infrastructure is costly making biofuels more expensive and less available than petrol and diesel. Although some argue that the net cost of producing ethanol is cheaper than for fossil fuels. Growing and processing biomass demands high energy and resources, often using fossil fuels in the process. This can offset biofuels environmental benefits potentially increasing carbon dioxide emissions compared to fossil fuels. Additionally, biofuels have lower specific energy than most fossil fuels. Let's now investigate hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen is a good fuel since it has a high specific energy and produces no carbon dioxide when it combusts. During the reaction, electrons are transferred from hydrogen to oxygen. Electron transfer reactions are called redox reactions, and such reactions can generate electrical current in a wire. So hydrogen can be used as a clean fuel in fuel cells, which work in a similar way to batteries, to produce electricity, with the only other products being water and heat energy. Fuel cell electric cars run on hydrogen power. When hydrogen is supplied to the electrode called the anode, it is oxidized to hydrogen ions and releases electrons into the electrode. These electrons travel up the wire to the external circuit where this current can be used to supply power 
for example to a light bulb or to drive a motor. The electrons then move to the electrode called the cathode, where they are used to reduce oxygen gas. We need to be able to derive the half equations occurring at each electrode and which together give this overall redox reaction shown. As hydrogen enters the anode, each hydrogen loses one electron as it forms water. This equation needs oxygen on the left. The electrolyte solution is sodium hydroxide and this supplies oxygen in the form of hydroxide ions to the hydrogen gas. And we can balance this equation. At the same time, oxygen gas enters the cathode and each oxygen atom gains two electrons as it forms water. This equation needs negative charges on the right to balance the negative charges on the left. And these negative charges come from the hydroxide ions in the electrolyte. So we write 4 OH- on the right. Now the charges are balanced. We can add water to the left side to ensure all oxygens and hydrogens are balanced. Then we simplify. Finally, if we add the two half equations, we get the net overall equation. This clean energy system can run continuously as long as hydrogen and oxygen are supplied. However, it is costly to manufacture fuel cells and to produce pure hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen is flammable and the pressurized gas canisters used to store it and oxygen are explosion hazards. Methanol fuel cells are similar, but they use liquid methanol instead of hydrogen. The methanol is oxidized over a catalyst under acidic conditions. At the anode, methanol is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Six electrons are transferred since the oxidation number of carbon changes from minus two to plus four. Oxidation numbers are covered in another video. To balance the charges, six hydrogen ions from the acidic solution are added to the right, and to balance hydrogen and oxygen, water is added to the left. Oxygen gas is reduced at the cathode, and water forms. The charges are balanced with hydrogen ions. Now we can add the two half equations. Finally, we get this net redox reaction for the methanol fuel cell. It's time to summarize what we've learned. Combustion reactions are exothermic reactions, which occur when a fuel reacts with oxygen. During complete combustion of alkanes or alcohols, sufficient oxygen gas is present to convert the fuel to carbon dioxide and water, and lots of thermal energy. During incomplete combustion, insufficient oxygen is present and the products are carbon monoxide and or carbon as soot and water and slightly less thermal energy. Energy from sunlight fixes carbon from carbon dioxide in the air into glucose in plants by photosynthesis. Fossil fuels are formed from the ancient remains of plant matter under anaerobic conditions. Fossil fuels include coal, crude oil and natural gas. Carbon dioxide is called a greenhouse gas since it absorbs wavelengths of sunlight and re-radiates them back to Earth as infrared light. Plant biomass can generate renewable biofuels like ethanol, but production requires significant energy and resources and emits carbon dioxide. Hydrogen is a clean fuel with a high specific energy. In a fuel cell, it reacts with oxygen to produce electricity.